Hello, fellow Araxians. I'm Commander Sirius. How you all doing today? Well, guys, I didn't realize it was possible, but the community has figured out how to start the drama over Outfit Wars before anything has happened. So the less productive portion of the video is going to be talking about that because there's a lot of takes I don't agree with. The more productive part about the video is an announcement. I'm going to be interviewing Rel about Outfit Wars, and I'm going to ask him your questions. So, soldiers, let's chat about Alpha Wars. I'll see you at planet side. So, first, the productive part. I'm going to have Rel on stream. I'm going to ask him your questions. You can look down in the description for a link to that stream. You can look in the upper right of this video. It is coming up on Thursday. That's August 4th at 6 p.m. Pacific. I am collecting the questions in Discord. You can see the link all around on the banner, down in the description, up in the upper right. The channel you're looking for is right under announcements and it's labeled Dev Q&A. People are already posting some questions in there. Take a look at those. Please react to the ones that you really wanna see asked. And if you don't see the one that you would like asked, please add it to the list. We'll start with questions that have the highest amount of reactions and we'll move down the list. If we can get to all of them, great. But if we can't, we'll at least get all the most popular ones done and answered. And before we dive into the drama at hand, thank you to everyone involved in the epic late night shift stream that happened. Rel, appreciate all your hard work for it. Gobs, Tide, Socars, AODR, Pigs, B-Way, Ghost of the Revolution, and 1TR. I'm sure I forgot someone. Thank you to all the outfits that participated and helped. Big shout out to Kamikaze and Orbi slash Takano. Both of you guys were instrumental in working with the streamers. Late Shift, we would love to have you back anytime. We always have a blast. Okay, everyone, on to Outfit Wars. Let's talk about competition. The bar has been raised for the level of competition in this new Outfit Wars iteration. But here's the problem, guys. This event is not competitive. Lane Smash is not competitive. Farmers League is not competitive. There has not been one competitive planetside event to date, and there never will be for this reason. There are no salaries or salary caps. It's as simple as that. We're gonna talk about sports, and we're gonna talk about esports. Esports is still in its infancy, so it's developing some of this, but in sports, it's very well developed. The way it works in American football is there's something called a salary cap. If one team can only spend $20 million on its salaries, and another team can spend $200 million on its salaries, the richer team is always going to win because it will attract all the talent away from the team that can't afford to pay them. At the same time, no team can spend wildly and just create a team of superstars because the superstars will have huge salary demands. In order to get their needs met, they will have to spread out among the teams in the NFL. So salary caps encourage talent to disperse. Overwatch does something similar. It's called a competitive balance tax. If teams go past a threshold, it was rumored at 1.6 mil in 2020, they had to pay a tax that was distributed to the league and to the other teams. So you couldn't have all the talented players going to one team and expecting a huge salary. Players desire to take care of themselves encourage them to disperse throughout the league, even if they have less of a chance of winning on that other team. Now, let's say as an American football team, you are going out and facing an opponent that you know you can't beat. Why go out and play? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. Keep the stadium running, keep everyone employed, all that. But the most very basic level, you're employed. You show up because they're your employer, and when you play the games, you get paid and feed your family. There is no baseline motivation for playing here. In fact, there are mostly negatives that we can talk about later. Same with something like Overwatch. Doesn't matter if you don't have a chance, you still go out and play. So I realize these are extreme examples, but the bottom line is Planetside lacks everything you need to really have competitive events. In fact, it's straight up backwards on a lot of things. In League of Legends, there's millions of people that play it, but only the very tippy top 0.0001% are what makes up the competitive teams. In Planetside, only thousands of players play it, and you need thousands of players just to fill out the matches. Your pool of players for the event is a very large portion of the active player base. 
it can't have truly competitive events because talent is not dispersed through the teams. The only incentive is winning. You get the bragging rights and you get the rewards. Coming in in fifth place but making a boatload of money is not an option. While there's opportunity for a few good matches here and there at the top at some servers, the majority of the fights will be determined before the match is ever played in the recruitment phase. And a lot of this recruitment happened five or six years ago. Many a time I've watched a midfit implode for one reason or another. The best players tend to bolster the ranks of the top outfit out there, and the other players go to a new, slightly watered down midfit. And that's not the only way this happens. Sometimes it's direct poaching. Sometimes it's players specifically looking for something more. This cannot be viewed as a negative though. If those players did not have the opportunity to go play with players on their skill level, they just leave. So while it poses a challenge for the balance and fun in the game overall, it's much better to retain those players in a new situation and continue to try to find ways to make it fun for everyone. Now this ascension or cream rising over the years has always been a challenge for Planetside on the live servers. If Planetside was a 1v1 environment, this would cause the game to completely implode. There would never be a way to counter a faction when it got an outfit that was super stacked on it. But the cutthroat nature of Planetside 2, that is a three-way, allows for the two factions to add additional pressure to the one that has the stack fit running, so it evens out well enough. In fact, that is why you saw the objectively worse stat-wise outfits and the underdogs winning in especially the first season of Outfit Wars, and in the most recent. It was certainly a much less competitive event than the one they're proposing now, but there was a chance for everyone on the field, no matter how good or bad, to win. This also meant that placing to make it into the tournament had an element of luck involved in it. Matches originally won points, zero, one, or two, based on first, second, or third place. If you showed up to a match with no opponent, you got a two without any issue. Now this is a big problem because even if the outfit wasn't very strong, they got the two. The team that objectively should be the number one could face off against two opponents and in a cutthroat match, get focused and not be the winner. They, they wouldn't get the two points. They may end up with a zero or a one and be lower in the rankings. So whether it was innocent or malicious, when outfits no-showed, it drastically skewed the results of the tournament. And because of those skewed results, people would direct their frustrations at the outfits for no-showing. The thing is though, that can't happen in a 1v1. If an outfit knows that it's gonna get warp gated, because remember, talent pools are not distributed, most of the matches are gonna be determined before anyone enters the pitch. The results of them showing or no showing are almost the same. If they showed, there is a chance they could take one of the middle bases and hold it for a little bit. It would take a very high level of coordination. They couldn't just post up maxes on point. If they showed their hand which way they were going to go, they would easily get wiped off with 10 seconds left. But the more likely scenario in that situation is the stack team is going to have plenty of pilots that will either swat down the galaxies that are trying for a last minute cap or superior IVI players that can take out a point hold. And they will cap all three of the middle bases. Then they can split their forces to take the two next accessible bases and then overload the final base for the warp gate. So the delta in the points for a match where the team knows they're going to get warp gated is maybe 10, maybe 20 points. The difference in a show or no show will have zero ultimate effect on the outcome of placement throughout the tournament. In fact, it really only has negatives for the outfit. Huge morale hit, risk for players not showing up to other matches that are important to you in the tournament, generally non-fun experience, and no reward. ISO inserts is no consolation prize for going out there and getting warp gated. Now to those outfits that are in that position, should you go out and play? Absolutely. You can set up some point holds with plenty of anti-air and try to hold out as long as you can at one of the bases. There are some things you can do to try to slow your opponent down and earn yourself a few points. But I know for a lot of outfits that know they're not playing for first, they won't care about points at all. It's just to have fun as a team and try a map you wouldn't normally get to play on. So just as some outfits played a more casual event very competitively 
in some of the earlier iterations of Outfit Wars. It's no big deal if some of the outfits play a more competitive event more casually in this version of Outfit Wars. Whether there are no shows or not, this event will be determined by whichever team stack the best leading up to it. In fact, I'm so confident in this prediction, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I bet I can predict the matches at above 90% accuracy throughout the event. The currency I'm going to use is $5 YouTube or Twitch subs. And I'm going to put up to 20 out per server bracket. If I lose, I'll be gifting YouTube or Twitch subs out to the person and creator of your choice. There's a few more details to how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to post that in the announcements in my Discord this weekend. And I'll be creating a special channel to post my predictions before the matches happen. So if you're curious about that, make sure you're subscribed to the Discord, and I will announce on Twitter once that prediction channel is up and running. So, fellow Raxians, there's a lot more thoughts I have on Outfit Wars. But again, we're going to be chatting with Rel about it, so I'll kind of talk through a few of them there. Make sure you have that link saved down in the description or up in the right. I'm going to have that conversation. We'll do some of the discussion there and probably do a wrap-up video where we get into discussion about what happens with Desolation now. Can outfits take this Nexus map outside of the tournament and still have a casual friendly match against people, whoever they would want to scrimmage, etc., etc.? So, that's going to be it for now, fellow Araxians. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you on stream very soon. But, I am Commander Sirius, and until next time, I will see you, Planetside.